What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. Today I'm going to be doing the third album review into the discography of Mr. Bongle. So since that I had reviewed their second album, Disco Volante, I'm going to be reviewing their third studio album entitled California. California is the third studio album by Mr. Bungle. It was released on the 13th of July 1999. This was released on the Warner Brothers Records label, self-produced by the band, follow-up to Disco Volante, released in 1995. California incorporates a wide variety of musical styles. Guitarist Trey Spruance, who had recently covered the Beach Boys' Good Vibrations for the album Smiling Pets, said that the work of Brian Wilson, particularly Smile, was definitely an influence especially when it comes to the Falchion scale of it. The songwriting process for California was much less collaborative than the band's previous albums. Despite having a more accessible sound than prior releases, saxophonist Clinton McKinnon has stated, It wasn't some attempt at reconciling how much we'd previously tortured our audiences with white noise. It wasn't some conscious attempt to normalise our music, or make it all the more palatable. On the album's writing and sound, Trevor Dunn stated in a 2017 interview that We never discussed our projected direction. We never sat down and said, Okay, the last record was like that, so now let's attempt this. Instead, we individually brought things to the collective table that somehow coalesced without premeditation. Regarding the album's title, drummer Danny Heifetz said in 1999, More than anything, that title really sums up sonically what's going on on the record. It's very pleasant at times. And then, there are a lot of little disasters that come up and present themselves, then blow over and go away like a storm. I would tend to explain it more like that, rather than, oh, California is this very deceptive place. It's bright on the outside and a really dark place on the inside. I mean, let's let the chili peppers do that. Upon release, California was well received by critics. Pitchfork called it one of those albums that you can't believe a major label had anything to do with. The more I listen to California, the more I'm convinced that Mike Patton is really the devil on holiday. Steve Huey, of All Music, similarly remarked that the album will make you marvel at the fact that such a defiantly odd, uncommercial band recorded for Warner Brothers. In 2017, Canadian site X Claim cited it as an essential album in Mike Patton's career discography, claiming California maintained the strange stylings that Mr. Bungle fans had come to love by that point but remains beautiful and melodic to this day. California presents Mr. Bungle at, yet again, another big form of a separate sound and identity. And this is very different to the very challenging, uncomfortable and uncompromising sound of nature's on Disco Volante. This is another record where Bungle takes things to another form of expression and the characters. Also, I think for this particular album to follow up that previous record is another great tremendous direction of artistry with another set of changes onto the sound, the production being another big thing on this album that it provides. They provide something much more cleaner and mellow on some of these tracks to this record. This is another big favourite for me. I, I mean, Mr. Bungle, to me, have not made a bad album in their entire discography, and I am so looking forward to hear their new release of The Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny, which, as I said from previous videos, that I will review that album. I'm going to go into the entire album track by track, because... There's quite a lot to talk about on each song, like on the first two records previously. The first song of the album is Sweet 
charity. Sweet surf style and the calm guitars with the keyboards that sound absolutely perfect. When I hear these keyboards, it's like a Faith No More type song when I hear them. Percussion being great, as well as the multi-tracked vocals. Patton's vocals were breathy and his chest voice was warm and gentle. And also the beautiful sounding song on the chord playing from Trey Spruance. And it presents something very eerie, especially on like a bit of a doo-wop, surfy kind of song. I also love the chord changes on the time to change the key of the song overall towards the end part of the song on the continuations. None of them knew they were robots. It is immediately a manic and crazy song with loud bashing drums and keyboards on the start and then switches to jazzy different drumming styles, other uses of guitar noises and switching into the sound of the track, hand claps and a wild sound. To me, this is a song that could have been something similar to a number on Disco Volante, but it is possibly their most progressive than anything that I've heard from a Mr. Bungle track, because of the memorable amount of striking musicianship with each member on their roles, and I do love the complementing turns between the guitars and the saxophones. And hearing other noises of Patton's vocals mixing things further. And in my opinion, this could have been added in a horror parody film or a freaky cartoon. Retro Vertigo. This is a song where it's so appropriate to take things down after the chaos of the previous song. The simple strums on the acoustic guitars fits the tempo and the tone perfectly, while it is slower than the previous tracks, but it paints another picture with the soft and descending volumes of sound. I also really love the vocals on this song, from Patton being, to me, at his best, as in that he's actually singing, being a singer, showing himself with a rich, wide range of vocals, as well as the harmonies that were completely awesome as well. I adore the sound of his vocals. The keyboards do fit in very confidently, and hearing the jangling notes and the percussion too. It's my favourite song on this album. And then one point later on, the distortion just pops through. It's sounding very, very marching to connect the guitar distortion with the drums that was back in the instrumentation as well. Retro Vertigo is a song that I adore and it's one of my top five favourite Mr. Bungle songs of all time. The Air Conditioned Nightmare. Rhythm of the hand claps and the blasting drums start things off. It pops into, again, another upbeat feel. Then the quicker tempo became so consistent, adding in other crazy noises of its uncompromising nature, and the vocals, to me, were in character. The distortion of the vocals can pop in for a brief amount of seconds. This is something similar to None of Them Knew They Were Robots, but the drumming presents a heavy feel, and it grows the aggression at the same time. The soft spots to the song were great, onto the keyboards and the high range of patterns singing here, and this could have been something similar to None of them knew they were robots. However, it is as switchable in terms of sound and production and the mood. Ars Moriendi, it starts things on a sound from a different country because of the sound of the accordion and also the hand claps to come back in once again. Changes to a beat that is, in my mind, like a strange disco beat as Patton follows this song's rhythm the craziness of this music continues on madly. It showcases another ability to take things deeper on many more different styles, like on Disco Volante again. This is another song where it is clever to listen to because of how transitional driven it continues. It's all over the place, but it is tight in a complex way. Pink Cigarette. This sets things on the introduction, in my mind, like a James Bond feel, 
then the 3-4 time signature continues throughout this entire song. This again, like Retro Vertigo, presents patterns, very low notes, and it is very, very moody, and it's wonderful to hear the melody on that range. And the chorus was excellent, connecting the music that is beautiful, and hearing the tambourine and the high-pitched background notes, the reverb texture. This is another one of my favourites from this album, and one of my favourite bungle songs ever. It's like a positive song, but as the song proceeds, it changes to a darker setting, especially on the lyrics. It's another one of my favourites on this album. Golem 2, the Bionic Vapor Boy. Strong beginning on hearing the music concrete noises to my mind. Talk box on the vocals and frenetic sections. Some parts of like an 8-bit video game sound. This is as experimental as it gets. And I love the bass on this song because it sounds so prominent. That's another big part of the song, because the bass to this song continues this sort of experimentalism, and this is really unusual of a song, but it still is clever, and I love the amount of passion that was taken into this track with the amount of effort showing the separate nature of itself like the other tracks. The Holy Filament is, in my eyes, one of the more underrated tracks, and just like some of the others that are my favourites, this is another one that I absolutely love. It's another masterpiece. It's a cinematic one from the introduction, the perfect vocal harmonies with its freaky but stellar sound. It is pretty intense because of its simplicity, and it could have been added in, like, a Swans record. That was adventurous sounding from the free, non-structured sound. A unique piece, like the others previously. And it is something the band didn't do before, in my eyes at least. Not just to repeat themselves and just to go over the top. But this song is another classic of the record. It's an experiencing one because it has a feeling where it is touching, but it sounds very downhearted. And this is lovely to hear the violins. One of the best bungle songs, in my opinion. Vanity Fair. This is the most obvious sound of the doo-wop sound, especially on the vocal technique. The saxophones and the easygoing music. It's a terrific, wicked vocal performance on the verse sections and the musicianship. The bluesy drum beat fits in at the same time, as well as the ascending instrumentation. To me, this is maybe my least favourite, but it is still very, very good to follow the rest of this album. Goodbye Sober Day. This song is one of their greatest as well. It is a quick, precise one with its own colours, that it fits things all together onto the wild amount of changes, and the chorus was perfect onto the pattern, vocal style. The music is as chaotic with the avant-garde, noisy, and free improvisational, powerful experience of a track. It's a punchy, assaulting, sound, yet it is tremendous and over the top. Another one of the things that I love, that they can provide a song very challenging, like on Disco Volante, but they really do take things very seriously to focus at the same time. It's one of the best things about this band, and Goodbye Sober Day is a terrific closer to finish off and conclude the record. The production on the album is phenomenal. In my opinion, out of the three, for now, studio albums, this is possibly Mr. Bungle's best production. I love how warm it sounds. It still sounds big. still presents a comfortable and, strangely to say this, like a cosy feel, especially on hearing the softest Bungle tracks, the production is absolutely perfect. 
a great amount of tone, the mixing was sublime, everything is heard crystal clear, like on the first album with its own nature, like a freaky, uncomfortable clown type sound to Disco Volante, as I said, being a really uncompromising, challenging sound. California is, to me, like an easy-going, but still a mad-sounding record. California by Mr. Bungle is a fantastic record that I obviously will recommend to anyone that has not heard anything from their discography. To me, this is like the beginning recommendation. I wouldn't recommend Disco Volante because they would be completely turned off by that record's sound and experience. I could have recommended the first album, but I think with some songs like Pink Cigarette or Retro Vertigo, this is a record that I would recommend first. I'm going to give California by Mr. Bungle a 9.5 out of 10, and I'm also looking forward to review their latest record, which I'm going to talk about really, really soon, because it's going to come out the later days of this month. So I'll make a video on that. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.